I'm grateful for the opportunity to be out here with you all today. Uh, I wish I could be there in person. Uh, I hate that I'm not. It's been many times I've been out there with you. I'm grateful to have the opportunity for one main reason, that is I enjoy more than anything talking disease and nematodes with you about the crops I work with. Again, my name is Bob Kimright. I'm an extension specialist at the University of Georgia. I work with corn, cotton, soybeans, and peanuts, and so I'm, I'd like to have the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, I'm standing in a field that we dug yesterday, a peanut field, and it seems odd to talk about this peanut field now for you all in, in probably in January of 2021. But the most important thing to note about it is this field, most of the most important management decisions that we made in this field, we made back as we were closing the furrow. The most important diseases in this field have been seedling diseases, have been tomato spotted wilt virus, have been the root knot nematode, and have been cylindricladium black rot, or CBR. And what makes those diseases special is that every management opportunity we have, for the most part, for the most part for those diseases, have to be made before you close the furrow. Before you close the furrow, you have to consider what variety you might plant. Some varieties like TIF NV High OL or TIF Guard are going to be near, nearly immune or certainly highly resistant to the root knot nematode. Some varieties that you plant are going to be more susceptible to tomato spotted wolf virus. Some varieties are going to be less susceptible to tomato spotted wolf virus. And again, that's something we'll talk about when we talk about peanut RX. But those will come out. So you have that opportunity, the variety you plant as well. I know that in the panhandle of Florida this year, we know that we've had a significant problem with leaf spot diseases. Again, the variety you plant may be more susceptible to leaf spot or less susceptible to leaf spot. So you have that opportunity as we move forward. Second thing that you have the opportunity for at this point is not only variety selection, but it's what you might put in furrow. Some of the products that you might put in furrow, if you're going to manage tomato spider wilt virus, you have one chance. If you manage nematodes, you have basically one chance, one real good chance. With the cylindricladium black rot, with the seedling disease, you have that as well. So what are some of the products you might put in after you look at the variety? Okay. The things that you have has been primarily been seed treatments that we've used in the past. has been primarily Dynasty PD on peanuts, a very good seed treatment. We also have a product out now called Rancona, which is being sold by UPL. As a peanut grower in the Panhandle of Florida going into 2021, I encourage you to look and to ask questions about what peanut fungicide, what seed treatment fungicide you're going to have on that seed. And from there, you can decide whether you want to use the Dynasty PD or the Rancona or whether you have a choice at all. But I can tell you in 2020, we had a significant problem coming out of 2019. We've had a significant problem with seedling diseases, especially Aspergillus crown rot and some of the seed rots on the seed. And the Rancona in our testing was providing somewhat better control. So what I would suggest is make sure you look. Make sure you look. It does matter what seed treatment you have. Dynasty PD versus Rancona may not make a difference, but just make sure you make an informed decision. Make sure you're aware of what you have. Second thing we can put in furrow is when we talk about nematodes. Talk about nematodes on peanuts when we talk about them on cotton, whatever we talk about, we know that we can put nematicides out. I doubt many of you all are going to use telone, a pre-fumigation with telone. But I will say that we have products like AgLogic. That's a new formulation of Aldicarb, which was Timic at what time. We still have that. We've used vellum. Vellum total in the past, 16 to 18 ounces under peanuts for nematode control and also as far as thrips control. We've got those as well. Going into 2021, you need to recognize that vellum total is probably going to be replaced by simply vellum. It will not have the imidacloprid. If you're going to use vellum under peanuts for nematode control in 2021, recognize you're probably going to need to use something for thrips control, whether it's imidacloprid, whether it's thymet or some other product, but just recognize you're going to have to do that. Okay? One of the reasons for going with vellum and furrow is obviously for our nematode control. Okay? The second thing is we know that when you use vellum and furrow, it also gives you some boost on early season leaf spot control. It's not going to be season long, but if you use vellum products in furrow, then you have the opportunity to maybe rather than start at 30 days after planting, start your lease spot program at 45 days after planting. Uh, the Ag Logic for nematode control. What about for spotted wilt? We have Thymet, we have Imetoclopred, the Ag Logic will give you, they will all control thrips, so control your thrips problems. The only product out there that will give you not only thrips control but help you to reduce your risk 
and again you can see this in peanut rx if you use thymat in furrow you'll see that it gives you some advantage as far as reducing your risk to, peanut, uh, to tomato spotted wilt virus and again tomato spotted wilt virus is one of those diseases where when that furrow closed you've picked your variety you've picked what insecticide you're going to use you've picked your planting date you've picked all the factors that can affect it and then it's a matter of watching tomato spotted wilt virus either be managed effectively throughout the season or you run into a problem with it so again what insecticide you're using counts as well now i mentioned that cbr cylindricalidium black rot is in this field and again i know from working in your area over the past i recognize that cbr has historically been a problem it hasn't been a problem in the last few years, but I can say back in 2020, back in the summer of 2020 when I visited, we did find some CBR. You get one real good chance to manage that. And the use of Proline in furrow, Proline in furrow 5.7 ounces per acre, is our management strategy for the CBR. That Proline in furrow also gives you some limited benefit against early season white mold as well. But if cylindricalidium black rot's a concern for you, seedling diseases have better be a concern for you. Some of you have the nematode problems, and for all of you, tomato spotted wilt virus is a risk. You have the opportunity before the furrow is closed. All I can say to growers who choose not to fight nematodes and end up having a nematode problem, all I can say to growers who look at the end of the season and say, I got more spotted wilt than I should have had or I wanted, I say, way back when, when you planted the peanuts, you had your opportunity. That's the chance you had. When we're looking at seedling diseases, again, when we're looking at the Aspergillus niger, the Aspergillus crown rot, and maybe some other diseases as well, if you have a stand issue, be concerned with where your seed came from. Was it farmer saved seed? Was it purchased? And what seed treatment went on it? Those things are important for you to consider early in the season. Early season applications can give you a jump on your leaf spot control. They can give you the best punch for nematodes, the best punch for tomato spotted wilt virus, the best punch for CBR, and may give you some limited benefits for white mold as well. Do not miss the opportunity in early season situations as far as disease and nematode control goes on peanuts. After we move into the middle of the season, now when we're talking about diseases on peanuts, a fungicide program is absolutely essential for success in your area. We have to have a fungicide program. One of the questions I get from growers all the time, I get from agents all the time, I get from consultants all the time, is what is the best program? And I can tell you there is no single best program. For a grower who has excellent rotation and excellent timeliness, there's probably a different fungicide will make that grower more money than someone's on a shorter rotation who has a greater disease problem. So it really depends. If you want to know the best fungicide program in your fields, you have to know your fields. You have to know the history of the fields. You have to recognize the integration of your varieties, the planting dates, all those factors, which again, you can find in Peanut RX. 2020, one of the biggest problems we had in Georgia, and I know on the pan out of Florida as well, was some of our leaf spot problems. Okay? We have two types of leaf spot. We have early leaf spot, which is generally not as aggressive, and we have late leaf spot, which is generally more aggressive. More aggressive in 2020, I saw a number of fields where I saw pictures out of the Panhandle of Florida. I could have showed you any number of fields out of Georgia where we had late season defoliation much more than what we would have wanted. There's two things to remember, three things to remember before you talk about a fungicide program in general. Okay? We can talk all day long about what fungicide you want to use first and second and third and fourth, etc. But if you are not timely, if you're not timely, if you get behind, if you don't start your fungicide program on time, if you get behind in your fungicide application, either because you had too much to do or because weather kept you out of it, it's going to be very, very difficult to catch back up. And then coverage, good and good coverage. So starting a fungicide program on time, staying on time, whether it's a 14-day interval or in some situations as much as a 28-day interval, and then making sure you get good coverage those factors are as important, if not more important, than the fungicide program you use. Going into 2021, again, that late leaf spot has been a huge issue for a lot of different growers. If you had problems with leaf spot, if you had problems with leaf spot in 2020, I suggest you go back and look over your spray dates. What was the interval between them? What products were you using? There are any number of products out there. Approach Prima from Corteva, Preaxor from BASF, Provisol, which is coming out from BASF, a new product as well that can be used uh, for leaf spot control. Lucento coming from FMC. We have some premium leaf spot products out there and we don't have to mention Miravis. Everybody knows about Miravis as being out there as well. So there are some premium products that you may want to consider. Backbone of fungicide remains chlorothalonil. 
Chlorothalonil will be sold in different for, diff, by different uh, brand names, but chlorothalonil is at the backbone. But just remember, chlorothalonil by itself, while it's good, is not a not the best product we have. So sometimes we mix things with it. We'll have other products that can be used. But look and see what happened in 2020. What was with your lease spot program? How effective was it? What do you think you need to do? Question I get a lot also is, what do I do if I get behind in the lease spot program? Okay. Well, try not to get behind. That's the biggest thing. Is what's the best thing to do for if you get behind? Is don't get behind. Timeliness, starting that fungicide program early, being on a good spray program will help you. What I don't want you to do if you get behind in a fungicide program and you start to see a problem is to throw some of our most important fungicides at it. I don't want you to go into a problem with least spot and throw Miravis at it. I don't want you to throw Preax or Provisol. If you use those products earlier in the season and use them effectively, you probably won't have to do that. But if you do get into a problem with leaf spot, I suggest you use chlorothalonil mixed with some other products. Products we look at would be something like Domar, Tetraconazole, or mixing it with Alto from Syngenta, or even mixing it with Topsin are ways that we can do it. Okay? So every year when I talk to growers, they're looking for what's new. What's new that I didn't know about last year? And usually we talk about new products, whether it's Provisol from BASF, whether it's the Lucento from FMC. But what's interesting this year is one of the most important fungicides that we're going to talk about is one that we reach way back and talk about and that is sulfur. Sulfur is a product that I really haven't talked about since I started here in 20 or in 2000. The reason for that is once we got our new products out we didn't see a place really for sulfur. They were good enough. We've looked at one formulation in particular on sulfur at five pounds per acre. It's called, uh, uh, it's called, uh, let's see, what is it called? It's called microthon. Okay, so one of the things I'd like you to reach back into and think about, we always talk about what's new, but let's talk about something that's exciting, but not all that new. And that product is microthon disperse or sulfur. There may be other formulations, but most of our work has been done with microthon disperse from UPL, five pounds per acre. I would not have believed it, but I'm not real smart sometimes. But what we have seen with this sulfur, when you mix that sulfur, five pounds per acre, that microthon disperse, when you mix it with tebuconazole, the old folicure, which we know is wounded for leaf spot control. When you mix it with azoxystrobin or a bound, which we know is wounded. When you mix that product in, even when you mix microthyl disperse in with a convoy program, we are seeing improved leaf spot control. So what I would suggest to growers as you're going into your fungicide programs in 2021, recognize not only do we have new and exciting fungicides, we have the old standbys, but it may be that a product like microthyl disperse, a formulation of sulfur, may bring better control, improved control to our uh, leaf spot programs at a really good price. So what I want you to think about is timing for leaf spot, starting the program on time, making sure you're using the kind of products that you need. If you have to play catch up, recognize that that's not a good place to be, but we have certain recommendations on how you would do that. And just recognize that going into 2021, along with the Lucento, along with the Approach Prima, along with the Provisol coming from BASF, recognize that we may reach back, we may find a new place and a good place to use sulfur in this coming season. After we've talked about leaf spot control, soil-borne diseases are very, very important. And again, I have been walked your fields. I know not as well as our county agents do, you know your county agents do, but I can certainly walk the fields in your area. And I recognize the importance of soil-borne diseases, primarily white mold. White mold is a major problem as far as the Panhandle of Florida goes, but also CBR, Syndicladium black rot, okay? As we get into the middle part of the season, there's three things we need to think about. The middle part of the season, we need to have an established white mold program. The second thing is, if you do have a problem with nematodes, whether it is the root knot nematode, which we're familiar with, but also now we're looking at lesion nematodes. Lesion nematodes can be especially prolific after a uh, corn rotation, after a bahia grass rotation. We're seeing more and more how they can damage pegs at harvest. So in addition to the white mold, we have to think if we're fighting nematodes, we may find a place for a product called Propulse from Bear Crop Science. So in this season, we're looking at white mold, we're looking continuing leaf spot control, and we may look at nematode control. What do we need to talk about as far as fungicides go for white mold control? Okay? Before we talk about a specific fungicide, just like we talked about for leaf spot, timing and being timely and your coverage are extremely critical. 
with white mold control. 60 days begins typically our white mold control, but for a lot of situations, especially if it's warm, if we have very warm season, it may prove to be that we need to have that earlier in the season. We may start at 45 days. If you're making a leaf spot application at 45 days, regardless of what else you're doing later in the season, I recommend mixing a product like Tebiconazole with it. Inexpensive, starts a white mold program early, something to consider, an opportunity for you. 60 days or thereabouts may be the start of a good white mold program. Okay? You get the best efficacy out of your white mold program by staying on time, but also if you can get some help from rainfall or from irrigation within the first 24 hours after application. We apply those fungicides to the top of the plant, we apply them to the foliage. If we do not get the material washed down to the crown of the plant, then we lose the opportunity to get the maximum benefit out of it. So if you have irrigation, the pivot turned on or starting to irrigate within 8 to 12 hours after application is optimal. If there's a chance, if you have the chance to use weather, if you're supposed to spray on Friday, but it looks like there's some weather coming in where it may rain on Thursday, spray on Wednesday to take advantage of that rainfall. The products work better that way. I talk a lot about what I call a 1994 program. That came out, that would have been the Folicure Bravo program. We still have Tebiconazole out there. We still have Chlorothalonil out there. And for growers who have good rotation, those programs may be inexpensive and they may be just all you need, a strong rotation. But we have new products out there. We have the new products you're familiar with with white mold. They're going to give you, and test after test after test, we see that where white mold is a threat, where you have the pressure from the white mold, we see that those products more than pay for themselves and bring in greater control. What I like about Tebiconazole, the old Folicure, I like it because it's inexpensive. I like it because it is effective to some degree. I like building it into otherwise or other programs, full season programs, because it gives us extra insurance. But if you really want to fight white mold in 2021, consider some of these products, whether products like Fontellus, whether they're products like Provo Silver, products like the Elatus that's out there, products like Convoy, products like Umbra, these products that have proven efficacy against white mold and will bring you greater strength. What's new for 2021? We're likely to have Excalia that's coming from Valent and our on-farm trials and on our station trials, our small plot research, Excalia has been as good or better than any fungicide we have out there now. Okay? Not always all the time, but it has been an outstanding white mold material. That doesn't mean you need to get away from what you're already doing, but my goal today, talking to you into the future, is what are the opportunities for an improved management program in 2021? One of those things is to look at your white mold control from 2020, were you satisfied? If you weren't, can you upload and make a new program? Could you increase your program? And maybe something like Excalia coming out from Valet would be something to consider. A couple things to remember. I call this a hit stick. We use this for rating white mold. This is one hit. This is a one foot section. This is roughly the width of one peanut plant. No fungicide program, no matter how good it can do, is going to eliminate individual plants in the field dying or succumbing to white mold. What's a problem is if you switch from a foot to three feet or four foot or five foot, if you start to see that the white mold's running in your program or in your field, you need to take steps to be aggressive, to control it. Why might white mold get away from you? First thing is if you're late, if you are not, don't have good timing. The second thing would be if your rates are wrong. Third thing would be is if you're not getting any help from irrigation or from rainfall, it may be difficult to control. And of course, the last thing may be, what fungicide are you using? We have to be realistic. No white mold fungicide, no matter how much money we spend on, is going to eliminate white mold in the field. But if you're not getting the control you need, it's time for an a la carte approach. It's time to say, I'm now at 60 days after planting, or I'm at 90 days after planting, I'm seeing more white mold than I expected. What is something I could put in there? Another thing to do is you can say, I've finished one company's program. I went out at 60 and 90 days, but I'm still seeing some white mold. Maybe what can we do to fill the gap in? You got at 90 days, you still have a long time to go before you harvest that crop and need to be prepared for that. The last thing I'm going to say is about harvest. Okay? How do we minimize losses at harvest from disease? Well, the first thing is we need to stay on a timely, strong fungicide program. We need to stay on a strong fungicide program, stay on time and try not to get behind. Second thing is we need to harvest the peanuts effectively and on time. If the peanuts stay on the ground longer than they might, we're likely to lose yield. The third thing to do, and I hate to say this, but the third thing is if disease becomes too severe prior to harvest, 
if the board tells you you got 17 days and you've already lost 60 percent of your leaves because of some problem with leaf spot or you've got 50 percent white mold in the field it's time to dig early okay so making the maximum yields is hopefully keeping the peanuts in there until they are at their harvest best if they're not you need to make some decisions based upon that last thing is i want to thank you all for having me hopefully the next time we'll be able to meet in person the most important thing to remember going into 2021 is that we will have the new and updated peanut rx for you our colleagues at florida at auburn at clemson at mississippi state here in georgia we're putting this together for you it'll be a good tool for you to discern how you can reduce the level of white mold spot will at least spot and then also programs you can use to manage them and with that i'll thank you and thanks for listening to me today